Knowing your trout stream and its dynamics is invaluable. Knowing that seasonal changes and impactful events can cause shifts in trout populations keen you to what needs to be done on your outings. This season saw a push of rain and spring runoff in the top end of this cutthroat trout stream that massively shifted the fine sand and gravel, covering the holding rock and reducing the available holding water and current breaks. The cutthroat trout were pushed to mid-valley where the fishing was exceptional. With about one-third the usual number of fish up top, we decided to take on the challenge at the peak of summer, just after a long weekend where angling pressure was high and a focus on details would be needed to catch one of the few we encountered. Hey guys, I've just wrapped up a really cool session. We are out here on the Tuesday after, um, Canada has an August long weekend, civic holiday. First Monday of every August is a holiday weekend. And this flat, you can't really tell it's a flat, but it's just kind of windy right now. Big flat just above a really popular campsite, which is just up above the end of, of a road on this small high country cutthroat trout stream. And it got pounded over the long weekend but we came out here saying you know what it's gonna have been pounded these fish are gonna have been worked so what do we do long leader 15 feet uh, 15 foot leader on on a four weight rod and it's down to 5x and the other thing I did was I started off with a tiny little um, polluting caddis but because the wind had come up it was too tiny and then I said, okay, I'm gonna have to go with a mayfly emerger. So on went the tan size 14 uh, innocuous mayfly emerger pattern. And that got a couple takes right off the hop because these fish are happy. And it's a wide gap hook um, because I wanna make sure that any take I get, I maximize my opportunity to get the hook set. I also then managed to get a couple of fish on a tiny little dropper nymph, uh, a size 18 2x shank, just again innocuous, just a little kind of vinyl rib uh, body um, mayfly nymph, tied that on with 5x. Why? All the 5x and the size, sizes of the flies is, and the length of leader is because it's a flat piece of water, crystal clear, gin clear water and it got pounded over the weekend. Anytime you're fishing follow up to masses of people, I guarantee 20, 30 people came through here over the weekend. I guarantee these fish got worked. So you have to make sure that you give yourself the best advantage um, and respect every ounce of spookiness and wariness and I don't want anything big, thank you very much. And we saw four fish, we got four fish. Just wait, watch, wait for rises, look for smudges lay out the line, put it on the fish. And when you do that with that kind of setup and you just respect it with gentle casts that lay out nicely, you can have your way and get these fish to do what you want them to do. And that was a lot of fun. Yeah, I see the one smudge of that guy up top. So I'm just gonna get myself going here. See if, I mean, just because I know where he was right now, doesn't mean I'm gonna see him in a minute, but should be able to see him the closer I get to him, too. Oh, there we go. All right. Okie dokie. So the wind picked up and they abandoned the rising in the back end and not much rising at all now that the wind's picked up. Um, so it's a, it's a game of fish the flats, yeah, but how about this guy right in here? Will they come up on that? That guy just rose. Oh, this guy's thinking about it. Oh, no, went across. Let's see if he'll come back over to me. No, oh dear, nice rise over there. Is he gonna keep coming down or what's he gonna do? No, okay, there's this guy right here. Let's see if he comes on that. Oh, will he come up? Yep, nice. Just kind of like that. Just watching the smudges on the bottom. Nice, really nice cut. And I love having this net right there again. Thanks to Oris's new pack. It's a heavy, chunky cutthroat. Whew. Nice. And let's get him into the sun. Great, wonderful, gorgeous. 
<laughs> I'm just gonna pop the fly in. Alrighty, so this guy's just kind of searching a little bit. There's actually two fish here. One's a white fish and one's a little cutthroat. Let's just see if this cutthroat will come up. Here he comes. There we go. Gorgeous. <laughs> that, that was that was really cool. <laughs> yeah, but this this is gorgeous. That's awesome. Yeah, pretty pretty dang sure this is a white fish right here. Um, is that got coppery glowy scales? I think. Yep, that's a white fish. Um, that's a nice rise up there. Yeah. I think there's one out in the middle here as well. So I got to get into the shade so I can see a little bit better. Yeah, there's definitely one out in the center there. So that one that was has risen a couple times is up over there. No, I can't actually see him. Okay. Yeah, that one there. Yeah. Here we go. Wait a second, he's chasing the whitefish. Really? Coming down past me here. <laughs> okay, let's wait for him to turn around because it's a cutthroat and this is generally what happens. Yeah. Bit of a left-handed cast here. Okay, he should see that if he wants to come up. He was just rising a minute ago. He was in such a great place to feed a dry fly 30 seconds ago. But he is not looking up right now. Okay, I'm gonna wait for him to do something here. Just going past my rod tip here, guys. I like him shallow too, though, so let's just try that. Let's see if he wants to look up as he gets shallower. Might have to tie on just a little wee nymph, eh? Right there. He just rose. Okay, I'm, I'm, I've am i got to go. Okay, here we go. See if he comes back. It's a little far out, I think. There he is on the nymph. Little dropper nymph. A little, speaking of size 18s, on 5X, well, there it was. See if my new friend wants to come downstream for us. That was nice of him to rise to show that wind made it real tough. Just a wee little dropper nymph. Wicked. Nice. Good stuff. Pretty sure there's one more at the top here. Let's go have a look. As you come through here, you don't want to just come running out here. Take your time. Look through the bush. Look through the branches. Try not to get your net hooked on said bush and branches. And just now looking. So far the, the fish have either been golden or kind of greeny blue brown that's you know <laughs> outside of every color of the rainbow <laughs> yeah so anywhere from <laughs> anywhere from the top side to the bottom side of the rainbow that's what you're looking for <laughs> yeah just yeah i know that's what the jensen's do you know they they identify rainbows so you don't have to I was thinking right out here. Well, kind of out in that. In that trophy bit? Yeah. Too bigger. Um, either or. I know we've seen them in this trough before, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to have a look to, to, to wait and see if there's any movement of shadow or shaping through that stuff. It's the best water to hold them in this whole thing right now. Yeah. I might just get myself into the shade slowly of course because now we're talking shallower water you're going on the gents in there they're cutthroat they're not going to spook they are going to spook if they're in shallow water 
and you're coming at them from above going, hello. The question I have is that fish that I just caught that had moved all over the place. Was that the one that I saw rise up here on part of a cycle? Yeah. So the sun comes out pretty good here, guys. And it's pretty amazing what you can see when the sun does come out. And as important when you look up a flat, isn't so much just looking for the shape of fish subsurface rising. Um, you you, you want to look for the shadow. Um, anytime you have this bright a sun, guess what that fish is going to do? It's going to it's going to create a shadow on the bottom, and that's where the the movement is really tipped off. There's one right here, in fact, right up at the end of my rod. Gorgeous up, and he just rose. What a nice rise! So I was cued off by the shadow on the bottom of that fish. Come around to me, love, and just a stunning fish location. And that's the beauty when the sun comes out, you get that shadow. So how we do it guys, is that when Amelia is on the camera, whenever one of us is on the camera trying to get a, a few rises from a fish on camera, where the other person's job is to really seriously scan all the way around and just look for fish and move up. Yeah, searching. Yeah, I got him and dropping back. Here he comes. Will he station or is he gonna come all the way down? He's coming all the way, oh, okay. So he's come all the way down. Isn't that amazing? He may end up right beside me. Yeah, I, I, I see him there. He just has to choose to turn around. There he goes there. That's, and he's, and of course, he's going right at the whitefish. <laughs> that poor whitefish takes a beating from these fish. Let's just see what he does. As he went over, visited one of the other cutthroat that's just sitting there, okay. And now they're all going downstream together. Okay. Okay, so the whitefish is coming back. The cutthroat that was upstream is kind of coming back. There's these two cuts right there. I think I've caught two of them. And I think that's the one that was upstream, the guy that's going across and up 100 miles an hour. Um, I'm pretty sure he's the one that's gonna go up. Yep, he's just risen. Yep, saw that. That's cool. So it's be interesting to see if he actually goes home or is he gonna station right there? Jeez, that's, that's a tough one. He's moving there now and across. <laughs> Oh, searching flats of fish. Is he gonna station right there? That would be gold. You see him? It looks like he's stationed. Yeah, let's, let's have a, I'm gonna move into position. Okay. Yeah, he's there. And let's just see if we can get it going at this fish. Methodically, cause you don't wanna be, oh, gorgeous rise. Do you want me just to do a dry only on this first cast? Behind him, sorry. One more. Suddenly, suddenly there's a breeze knocking my cast back. <laughs> okay, you still on him? Yeah, hey, love. Sure. That's on him. Yeah, it was just a matter of, suddenly there was a downstream breeze and I was like, really? And it just punched it back so it only laid out right so, you know? So this is the fish that was upstream, decided to turn around from his feeding position, came down, tucked into home, chased some fish, went back across the river, stationed, and then I tried casting. And of course, the, just a little, little wind. And the reason the little wind was an issue was only because I was creeping and jabbing because of all this stuff behind me. Kind of a creep jab, deliberate creep jab on this kind of a steeple cast. So it's kind of funny because every fish I've caught is downstream of me now. <laughs> eh, with the exception of the white fish. Uh, yeah, it does, it works really well. This is a healthy, healthy cut. Come on, bud, there we go. Nice cut, gorgeous. Really nice fish, love. And up and got the nice. fly, beauty. 
Nice, Ooh. gorgeous fish, hey? Yeah. Okay. Got it, Dave. Shall we do the release right there? Awesome. Sure, right there. Okay, down, up, and go. Here we go, love. Gorgeous cut. Wow, nice, really nice. Okay guys, so that last fish was really cool. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous cutthroat trout in the sun. And what, what actually made it really cool is it was moving all over the place, but it had risen up here a couple times and then moved downstream. And as it moved back up from the depths of the bottom end of a cycle, it moved across and was in shallower water in full sun and rose twice. And I said to Amelia, um, you know what, why don't we not give a rising fish the option? What I mean by that is, um, if a fish is happy and it's rising, and you want to get a dry fly, eat. Sorry, I'm just distracted watching a mayfly for another, another possible rise. But if you want a dry fly, eat, and you know the fish is happy, don't leave the dropper nymph on. Just pop it off. And that's what I did for, you know, for the camera's sake and for our sake. We love this stuff. And I was like, I'm going to take the nymph off. And lo and behold, it was the right call. You know, don't give happy fish the option. Just feed them dry flies and enjoy the dry fly moment. Man, these thin fairy plants are so amazing. They get so big in here. So guys, as we're walking up this next stretch here, um, you can see that there's a shaded bits. You can see a bit of a shaded bit where I'm pointing with my rod to the left of the big boulder. You can also see a shaded bit to the right of it and it's all broken rock in front of me and I bet money that if there's going to be a fish here he's going to probably be up along where the current comes around the big boulder and in that shaded bit there. Um, Dave's going to be looking in the sun over here he's just to my left and he's looking on that and I'm going to just take it real slow coming into this shaded bit and be looking real hard for anything swaying. So the other thing I'm doing guys is actually swinging quite wide of this big boulder because it allows me as I come in, I mean you got some pretty stark contrast with sun and shade, but as I'm coming in I use the darkness of that big rock to help me to see. Now of course we're going to get into some cloud and I love that because that whole trough is definitely coming alive and I can see almost everything in it. Not seeing a fish yet, but slowly move my way along these alders. No movement here? No. No, nothing's showing like it's swaying. It, it, you know, you'd think you'd put a fish in these sandy patches between the rocks, but... Of course, most people would ask, well, why don't you just fish it anyway? But you're going to see anything over a foot in here. You're, you're going to see, gonna see it. it. You can't miss it. So this is the really neat stuff about cutthroat trout streams in the mountains, guys, is these massive log jam buildups. Um, you know, you do get some neat pockets. Now, not all of them are going to hold fish. Uh, you got to look for that really soft stuff, that soft, soft edge water. But I'm just coming up to here and I'm going to give it a good look and we'll see. Um, kind of a crazy high water year so I don't have high hopes but it's still really fun to look in and when you find one in this stuff super fun so it looks like Dave's found one he's just up I've walked up to him after fishing some water and he's on the camera so that says good things to me <laughs> hey there. yep in really shallow is he oh right there right there. oh wait right where yep there he is, turn around, turn around, fish, turn around. See him? Yeah, I see him. I can't do anything in this second. I'll just get rid of the... Oh, I will be if he comes back out. 
Yeah. Here he comes. I'm not doing anything yet. I don't think he's aware of me. Okay, here we go. Well, I had to, I've, otherwise I'm... No, I gotta go more over. This should do it. Coming over him right now. Got him, yes, nice, that was gorgeous, guys. That was sight nymphing. Saw that head come up, saw him take, turn. That was really neat. Okay, I'm cranking it to the side to keep him out of those logs and try to bring him to the back end of the pool. Still cranking a bit. Come on, keep him out, keep him out. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. There we go. Awesome. Yeah, nice fish. Actually way bigger than I thought it was, Dave. Way fatter. Beauty. Beautiful, hey? Look at that cut. That's stunning. Got it. Got it? Yeah. Great. <laughs> Guys, I'm laughing because I thought I was looking into a glass bowl because I was probably about maybe 10 feet away from that fish. <laughs> and Dave just finished showing me the clip that he got on camera of that nymphite. Wow, just wow. The clarity of it, I mean, you can just see it all and <laughs> it's so worth waiting for. Yeah, sometimes when you can work fish, um, you know, you're at a pool or something like this, and you know that they're, if you watch them for a bit and their tendency is to want to drop out to the tail out, to the shallow end of the pool, it's really fun to kind of decide, hey, I'm going to take that fish when he does that. Because again, you get the joy of the visuals and that was just amazing for the two of us. Here he comes. Yes. Nice. Try to bring him down for the other fish. That's my hope. No, 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 no. Logs, logs. Yeah, back him out. Okay, here we go. What a gorgeous cutthroat. Another pretty chunky one, Dave. That was nice. Polywing caddis does the trick. Okay, you guys, so I've seen where the fish is. He likes to rise pretty much right up along the main seam, right where the foam is. So I'm gonna get myself in a position to get my flies in there. I know, I'm thinking the same, so good call. Okay, ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. How's a good chance? Lead him another foot. Wow, really? Yeah. It's gonna get real tight. Yeah. Has a chance. Yes, and he takes the dry. Wow. Come on, out you come, out you come. I actually had a weird gut feeling about that, you guys. Said to myself, you know, I'm gonna put on this nymph, and as we've talked about before, see if I can draw him to come up and eat the mayfly, and that's exactly what he did. How neat is that? Okay, can I get this fish out though? Come on, come on, come on, I got 5x. Come on. Come on. Oh, 
pop. Yep. That one got me. That was tough. That's hard to take, guys. That's a nice fish. I was trying. So you can see in front of me here, you got a couple submerged logs coming out from that whole clump of overhanging spruce. And that fish was gunning it to go under. And all I could do is keep pressure and try to back up. And he did a head shake and he's gone. I gotta see if I actually uh, even got a fly back. Bummer. I wonder if there'll be anybody here this year. The rocks that were there. Yeah. And we could definitely use some of that sunlight to come back. Wow, that's just all filled in. Like the rocks that were here. Long covered. Except for that right there. Is that a fish or is that just a stick on the bottom? Oh, there's definitely a fish up top. Yeah, definitely a fish up top. To his right, coming down to him right now and got him. Wicked. Oh, you missed him. I set. Amazing, eh? Came one of those, come up, smash it. Oh. I'll see what you got because uh, I set on him, but. Yep. Wow. There we go. Ready? Yeah, yeah after that, hang on. Here we go. Coming right down to him. Coming right down to him. Oh, another fish came for it. Wow. Jeepers. What, were the odds of that? what <laughs> was the odds of that at all? Man, that threw me. A fish from upstream. Wow. Okay, guys. Talk about just a total psych out there. I'm going for this fish. You know, my flies, dry flies drifting in with my nymph. And I'm going, yeah, I'm perfectly right above them. This other fish comes screaming in from upstream. I don't even see. Wow. And I don't get anything. That was crazy, hey? Ready? Okay. Oh my, here we go. No, let's wait till he comes back this way. I don't like it way over there, do you? Yeah. Oh wow, they're both side by each, rising. Which fish is gonna actually go for my fly like jeepers? Here we go. I'm going to lead him on the right side. Here we go. And, nope, timing. Draw him this way. Definitely drawing him this way. Quite a ways this way. Here he comes, here he comes, and takes the dry. After Unbelievable. Again, hey? Again, oh. Oh well, jeez, unbelievable. Boy, that's pff, bizarre. bizarre and it's been happening quite a bit, you know? It has. Unreal. You tie a dropper on yeah. and they come to the dry fly. And they just, just come a, screaming to the dry fly. Effect, eh? Totally is, yeah. Crazy stuff, guys, but that's what's going on. <laughs> <laughs>